do you think you could draw a building that's this large with this much detail that takes up so much of the paper? And not just any building, but a building with a lot of detail and a great deal of complex ornamentation and architecture on the roof and in silhouette. It may not be as hard as it looks or as hard as you think. Every drawing is just line on line on line. But learning to anticipate the problems we're going to have with a drawing and then to work out ways to be conscious of those problems and to work through them is an important part of a drawing. Let me step you through my process of that with this one. And this is our reference photo. Isn't this a great building? I was walking across an intersection in Edinburgh and turned around and there it was. And I've always wanted to draw it. So let's give it a go, eh? As always, I start with what looks to be the simplest, most straightforward part of my drawing to draw accurately, to get all the proportions correct, because this first unit of my subject will end up being my reference point for measuring out from. So I want to make it as accurate as I can. And this center front section on the corner is ideally suited for that. Lots of rectangles that I can really work hard at getting in proportion and then I can start to move up and out from it. There's no real problem with perspective or foreshortening here, so it also lets me warm up my penmanship. At this early stage, I'm not worried too much about ground level because I'll tackle that when I've got more of the drawing done. So now I start to work out my perspective, and this is very important. These perspective lines will go right the length of the drawing. So it's important that I get them accurate at the start because I don't want them to have to change direction halfway through. Now, these windows that I draw here will have the most detail, most carefully drawn of the many windows that I will be drawing. We see closer detail more clearly. And so if we draw it in greater detail, it will look closer and feel closer. And equally, we can draw further detail with a lighter, less detailed touch, and that will help it assume the way it looks in life, where further away things we don't see as clearly. But so these ones will establish how the brain will understand the further away ones, which aren't as clearly drawn. Now I'm moving across to the right working really hard particularly to make sure my widths aren't too wide because my fear is that with even a slight exaggeration of each of these vertical segments that my drawing will run off the page or at least look as though it's been stretched and it won't have that nice tight perspective that it has in life. I draw this street light in first and then I position the building around it trying to take lines almost up to the street light but just leaving a very slight gap to help it sit in front and now I work more detail behind it. I've now done a lot of these windows and I'm having fun with them. I don't know if you've noticed but I'm trying to reflect the fact that on sash windows the lower part of the window sits further back than the upper part so when I do the shadow I sit the bottom shadow further back than the top shadow. And I start to position some of the roof work as well. But I'm not going to do too much of the roof too quickly because it'll be easier to get the scale for the roof correct if I've drawn more of the facade. As my usual custom, I use the pen to measure angles of perspective, not just in the main perspective direction, but in the minor ones as well. I've been using a 0.3 millimeter fine liner, but I'm about to change to a 0.2 because there's the same number of lines in one sense to draw as the building moves to the right, but the detail has to be put into a smaller and smaller space. And I don't want the line work to start to look cluttered. So switching to a finer line is a way of maintaining many of the lines to give the sense of the detail, but not having the line become more prominent than the overall object. Similarly, I switched to a 0.1 millimeter pen for the final section of the drawing down the far end of the street. 
So I'm being really careful here with the perspective. I'm, I'm doing my second gable on the roof and you can see that I measure the perspective angle with my pen from my reference and then on the paper over again and again use the pen to measure the second perspective angle down to the left. With these chimneys it might look like I draw all the detail but in fact I just suggest that the sort of pattern that there is in life. I do more detail now at the bottom of the building because I do want to be able to establish while I've still got the 0.3 millimeter pen I want to be able to establish the figures so that I can put the building behind them. So I really have to get the scale correct. If I draw them too large, it will make the building look miniature in. If I draw them too small, they'll just look like ants. So working really hard with getting that scale correct and then the figures in the center of the street as well, who are slightly closer and therefore of a slightly different scale. They're a little bit larger. And I need to reflect that in my drawing. And then I also draw some of the other details in the street and the cars. I don't get the cars lined up as accurately as I would have liked. The first car seems to sit higher than the subsequent cars do. So again you can see me maintaining these long perspective lines and working hard to keep them as accurate as I can. With a drawing with this much small detail it's good to stand up sometimes and have a look from a further distance. Actually looking through the camera is a very good way of seeing that my lines do align properly whether they're perspective lines or whether they're vertical lines because in the camera a large scene is condensed into a small area and it's easy to get a very accurate overall view. So now I'm doing these towers with my 0.2 millimeter pen. These rounded towers. By now I'm drawing a lot less of the detail than I did at the start and it's a lot quicker as well. It's important when we do a scene such as this that we appreciate that it's the parts we draw first that will take up the most time and be the most challenging. And that as we progress the drawing, we will get faster at drawing the various elements in it particularly if we start in the foreground and recede because there'll be a lot less detail we need to draw. Now I'm drawing the second tower. The gap between the two of them is pretty much compressed to nothing from this angle now. Uh, the challenge is to make this second domed turret um, structure a bit smaller and to sit in the same perspective line as everything else in the drawing. Again, I'm drawing behind a streetlight in the same way. And so I'm switching now to a 0 0.1 millimeter pen for these much finer lines right down the very end. There are two gables here, and it's important that the tips of these structures sit in the perspective line. You, you see me measure that perspective alignment with the first gable that I drew. And then I'm moving down now for the very last section of the building and I really am much lighter in my line work. Again, getting that angle correct for this fourth and final gable. And now I'm putting these cars in and you can see that, yes, that first car, it's like it's sitting about six inches off the ground but it's a bit too late to do anything about that beyond what I've done. I now add these details down the end of the street and these sorts of surrounds I think are important for giving a context to our building, helps to establish scale and just generally is a more, gives a more realistic feel to our scene. I, I do my best just to drop the building a bit lower where I first drew it because I feel like I've gone down just a fraction too far with the building. So to compensate for that, I've just by a couple of millimeters lower the front. And now I'm just drawing this left-hand side section, which I drew for an earlier video, but it's much easier drawing it now, having drawn all of the, the length of the facade. I understand the structure of it a whole lot better. I have to go back to adding a bit more detail because 
it's a lot closer to us obviously than most of the building that I've drawn and again I'm getting this gable kind of the right scale and size so it fits in with the rest of the building for where it is and I'm starting to feel relaxed here's a closer look at the line work and you can see that this furthest line is noticeably lighter than the closest lines and if we'd used 0.3 millimeter pen for the whole facade it would have been very cluttered with lines that would have made the building look darker further back instead of lighter which is more the effective distance we want g'day i'm stephen travers i'll let you look at my drawing instead of having to look at my face this time but i hope you can see looking at this drawing the important thing is to nail the perspective lines and to get the foreshortening get that compression of what we see as a building moves further away to get that right if we get that right the drawing is going to almost certainly look great while there's a lot of detail it's a lot of repetition of the same sort of detail and it's not so much more difficult as more time consuming and so if you like spending a lot of time on one drawing this can be a great sort of subject to attempt we can stop any time we want or we can keep going and end up with a great looking drawing that we can feel really accomplished with. Why not give it a go? Tackle something that perhaps is a big challenge for you and use it as a learning experience or better, create a wonderful architectural drawing. Have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.